G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo Warm Junior to another Rip Roaring episode. Today, we're having a look at a green build that we've done in inner suburban Melbourne. It's an old existing home that we needed to stitch into and the back of the home was getting really tired and really hot. And that was actually having an effect over the rest of the house. What we have is the back of the house directly facing north, north being the hottest part. So it was single glazed, it had no eave, and the roof was really flat. So what was happening was it was a sweat box basically on the back of the house. How do we go about fixing it? What we did was we looked firstly at the orientation of the build and the lay of the land. Then what we did was we extended the back of it out and we lifted the roof where we could. We understood the trajectory of the sun over the area and we extended our eave out so what we could do was really block out as much of that summer sun as we could but yet not too far out that we could really get that nice winter sun in and warm up the thermal mass of the concrete. We put a concrete slab in for stability as the soil type here was a class H2, which was a high reactive second glass soil. All of the walls have been insulated and the roof as well. We've even put windows facing directly south. The south facing home in Melbourne is where the cool air comes from, the cool wind. So what we wanna really utilize is opening up those windows in the really hot summer days and getting some nice cool air into this house. I've talked before in a few of my other videos about the outside environment and inviting the outside environment inside. It creates a truly healthy environment for everybody around. All of the paints that we've used throughout the entire house are low VOCs, low volatile organic compounds. And our joinery systems here, we also did a lot of homework on the type of particle board that we've used on those and use low VOC, low formaldehyde based products. The kitchen area is existing and I'm a really big firm believer in retrofitting or recycling and reclaiming as many materials as we can. So we left the kitchen as it was but we just dressed it up. We put a few new hinges in, we've put some new shelves in, and we even put a new bench top over the entire kitchen area. We really used the, the space as much as we could to invite the inside to the outside and the flow factor. And we put an island bench in there as well. The side entrance there, we wanted to really utilize the side entrance and try and get some air in from down the east side of the house. So we didn't want to have to open the door the whole time, so we've actually installed a window inside the door, believe it or not. How cool is that? Today's modern technologies, we have so many little tricks of the trade that we can do. We've put one split system in the back of the house here, and the reason that we've put it at the back of the house is it's on the north face. So what we're gonna use is, if it gets really warm inside in any way, we can switch that on, and that cool air blows the whole way down. We can also really use the fan on that feature and open up those doors, switch that on and it blows all of that clean air throughout the house and we can close that up, switch that off and that energy stays in the home for a really nice long period of time. All of our top plates and our bottom plates have been sealed before we've put all of our claddings on. But we've also made sure that we've insulated all of our walls and our ceiling space. One big feature we would have loved to have changed, but the budget wasn't there, was to have actually put an openable skylight inside the kitchen. We weren't able to do that. I'm a huge fan of openable skylights if you're gonna be putting skylights in. Skylights are a great natural way of getting light into the home all year round and at no cost. One big factor that we do when we do a build like this is select our timber well. What I talk about that is our decking timber outside is spotted gum. We only use locally grown timbers. So we don't use any Merbu or Malaysian, Indonesian grown rainforest timber. When people cut down timber or get their timber from overseas, we can't control how that timber is used or where it's come from. Erosion kicks in, washes away topsoil, and we have massive problems in those areas. It's all about this and not actually about having a healthy environment. From the homework that I've done and the different mills that I've gone and interviewed, you can really see some of the passion that our timber millers have about keeping a healthy environment, not just for the bushland, but a good quality timber as well for everybody to enjoy in their own homes. So the next time that you're thinking about doing a build in 
a suburban area in Australia, really think about the way that you go about it. I don't build the same home in Melbourne as I would if I was building in Cairns. They're two completely different environments, they're two completely different building methods. So make sure you understand where you're building your home, how you're building your home, and have, try as much as you can to have a set budget for it. Thanks for watching. Any questions or queries about any of this and more, please flick it over for me and I'll answer it for you best I can, whenever I can. Thanks for watching and like always everyone, stay unreal, but unappeal. I'll see you in the soup.